Hello everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. This is not going to be a picking video. This is just going to be an update and a discussion on uh, cleaning locks and restoring locks and stuff. Um, this particular guard lock is going to be an update also. I haven't gotten him open yet, but I did a couple of things. I soaked it in... Um, vinegar again and this is what we'll discuss about you know like how to clean up locks or how i clean up locks and stuff and everything and then uh this is it with using a brass brush now you can use a brass wheel or whatever you want to do but it it brings out it gets rid of the uh, the vinegar part of it um, so I'm talking about that mainly and uh, the reason why I, I like to use vinegar is because um, you could just drop the lock in there in a little bucket and let it soak it's cheap you get a lot of vinegar for um, covering up big locks and stuff like this you can pour it in there you don't have to worry about disposing of it it's like biodegradable you can just pour it right down the drain as a matter of fact it's usually good to pour vinegar down your drain to help loosen up uh, any oils and stuff. It's a mild acid, so it's going to try to eat away at like uh, surface rust and stuff like that. That kind of works to its disadvantage in some ways because it will change the color of the lock. So if, you're, if you never see, like this lock was produced, let's say, in a... Uh, in a, in a natural brass state like this and then as they weather and everything as they get older I'm trying to find an older one over here as, as they get older and everything they start turning you know like a darker brown here's where we come to what is the purpose of you Restoring this lock. What do you re want to restore it to do, or do you even want to restore it? Do you just want to clean it up? You know have your goal in mind and remember It's your lock and it's your goal So if you like your locks to look like this Then all you have to do is wipe off any blood or oil or brains or whatever, you know pieces of body parts that are stuck to the lock like if it was a zombie apocalypse or something. And uh, you're good to go. For you, it works, you know. Just get it lubed and cleaned up and you're good to go. <clears throat> Some people don't like that. I'm kind of like toss up in between. Like this one right here. It's got a nice, like, older patina to it. And it is an older lock. Um, so, I'm going to leave it like that. This is fun. This lock is fine. However, if I run into one of those that was like new old stock and brand new or whatever, then uh, like for example, the CSIS, it's, it's a new, it's a new lock. Well, there's nothing you need to do with it, you know, so you can forget about that and put that one aside. But this is just talking about older locks that some of these are really dirty. Like this particular one here, the reason why this is all shiny was... There was a, a price sticker here that was like some glue. Now vinegar, when you when you soak it in vinegar, you think, ah, it's not doing anything. You, you soak it in there for like, as long as you give it a good soak for like 24 hours, you can do even longer, but at least 24 hours or so usually. Um, it'll do a good job of, uh, a job of dissolving the surface crap that's up there, you know, like tar and all this other crap. And uh, you, you get a rag you know, something like that, and you wipe it off, and a lot of it's going to start coming off. In this case, it has a price sticker that was right there that had gone away, but the ad adhesive was still there, and uh, it looked unsightly. It was right where the lettering was. Your eyes were drawn to it and not, you know, the whole lettering, and it kind of threw off stuff. So um, then I tried to... Uh, scrape harder right there with the the brass brush you know but it wasn't getting anywhere so finally i took some 400 grit emery cloth or sandpaper and i started getting it 
and it got it but it left it kind of shiny and i thought you know what this is a good time since this is kind of like a throwaway thing i want the cylinder out of this and the pins i still haven't gotten to yet um but uh while I'm at it, I might as well shine one side and then leave the other side as it is with just using, um, you know, a cloth to wipe it up. Now, th there is always usually some natural grain to the, the brass uh, when you see one of these. There's a way that it naturally goes. Like, this one is up and down, and and this one is like this. It's, it's all how they, they buffed it, you know, or how they uh, shined it off when they originally got the original slab before they put the imprint on it or whatever uh, but if you want to preserve that you can't go too far down with your sandpapering and everything uh, or too fine with the grit of your stuff unless your objective is something super shiny which I don't have one of those around here and I don't want this to draw out too long well I'll get one back over here this is one of those where they have taken like jeweler's rouge and shined it up. This one's not too crazy. They didn't go too crazy with it, but they did go uh, beyond what its natural state is. But if that, if all the other locks in your display are all shiny like this, you know Louis Vuitton and Gucci or whatever you've got, you know, in your shiny lock collection, and you were to put, you know one of these guys up there and I'm, I'm that to me that would be cool it'd be like a contrast it'd make it'd be like ugly and beautiful or whatever but in in my opinion this one's beautiful and that one's ugly you know what i mean so it's all a personal thing and who are you trying to impress and everything else and i'm not trying to impress anybody but myself i'm trying to learn things you know um what to use how to do things and uh minimal amount of tools as possible uh, i know i can put an attachment on my dremel tool with like a little wire brush or something like that and really get into here and do this also this looks like this lock they physically tried to knock it off of where it was with either a hammer or something but those are really solid dents down here now these on the side i did and i wasn't really trying to protect it when i was trying to knock the pins out and everything i didn't do this stuff on the bottom um, but yeah, it's still a cool log. It's still a big chunk of, uh, brass. Um, as you can see, the, 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 this color here, the brownish color, it may not show up well on the camera, but, uh, that's from the vinegar eating into the zinc and tin and the, the process that makes, uh, brass. And it, I think it's bringing out the, the more copper, you know, the copper color to it, which I think is cool looking. But if you want to restore it, it doesn't go down very far. I mean, it's a mild acid, like I said, which is found in a... You can also use... I saw somewhere else someone was posting this, but the whole principle is basically acid, mild acid. So you can use a... Um, and get the same effect, uh, lemon juice, lime juice, any citric, you know, acid like that. Tomato juice, those are... Tomatoes are mildly acidic. Things like that, and they have the advantage, like I said, of being biodegradable. Now, if all of what you're doing is not working, everything, you can always go to something like Brake's uh, Part Cleaner, and they have, they have like here is low VOC formula, that's vol uh, volatile, volatile Organic Chemicals formula. So they're trying to cut down the stuff right here, but it quickly removes tough brake fluid, Grease and oil dries fast. But then over here, you got the warnings and the dangers that you don't see on vinegar and all this other stuff. Vapor, harmful or fatal if swallowed. Maybe fatal or cause blindness if swallowed. Eye and skin irritant contents under pressure. Now, see, you think all this, yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you got this little nozzle right here and you're spraying like this and you don't have safety glasses on, and you push this thing right here, and you're looking to try to make sure it's close enough, you're not going to realize how much pressure that is, and that shit's going to come straight back into your eyes. And guess what? Now you're not going to be able to read the warnings you should have read before because you're going to be blind or it's going to mess you up pretty badly. And then look at all the dangers, man. Poison, blah, blah, blah. It contains methanol. 
toluene, acetone, and carbon dioxide cannot be made non-poisonous. You know, so, yeah. Which, believe me, I've worked around stronger chemicals than that. So, it's, it's not that bad if you have to resort to that. But that's my pr preference for the natural methods. They may be slower. Um, they may not work to your advantage. They may have some uh, disadvantages, you know, like change the color. And the whole purpose was you didn't like the color in the first place. But all that's easily ramified, you know, rectified if you uh, sit there and use a little elbow grease or a brass brush or something like that. So there you go. Just want to give you a little update on... Um, Restoring locks and what it is. The main thing is have your objective in mind. What is your objective? What do you want this to look like when it's finished? You want it like in the shiniest state or whatever. And then go about it whatever method it is. If you want it super polished, then you're better off getting a, putting a buffing wheel on your uh, bench grinder and away you go. You know, just buff away. And put a lot of Jewelers Rouge, that red stuff. They got different color. And oh man! And and when you're got your sunglasses on and everything, and you can't see it anymore, then you've got your abortion. I mean, your lock. You know that uh, it's all bright and shiny and doesn't look like a lock anymore. But maybe you need a beacon. You know, light up your uh, road or whatever. Or a holy grail. It could be your holy grail. But there you go. That's that's just my little opinion and my rambling and my rant. I better cut this off before I go totally insane and they call the mental squad on me. Watch, I watch some YouTube videos and I just like say, you need to go check on that guy. He's totally insane. No, he's not. He's got talking cats and they're the ones that were doing it all. The, top, the cats were doing it, not him. Well, there you go, everyone. Happy picking. Clean your lock whatever way you want it to. If you don't, if you like dirty locks, fine. I personally like them to be a little bit clean, and uh, that's just my personal preference. But I think, I think this is not bad compared to that, and compared to what it originally was. You couldn't even handle this lock without coming back with a bunch of crap all over your hands. Um, so there you go. Happy picking and. Enjoy your weekend.